Sierra, San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Sumo Logic Illuminate 2018. Now here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're at Sumo Logic Illuminate at the Hyatt Regency at San Francisco Airport in Burlingame. About 600 people. The second year of this conference, about triple the amount of people that they had last year. A lot of buzz, a lot of activity, some really creative things that I've never seen in the conference world. With the the uh, the silent disco kind of treatment for the training, it's pretty cool. Everyone's in the same room listening to their own and training. I've never seen that before. We're excited to have fresh off the keynote, the leader of this party, President and CEO of Sumo Logic. Ramin Sayer. Ramin, great job on the, uh, on the keynote today. Great, thank you for having me today. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. So a lot of passion really came through. It's, it struck me and, and it, was, it was palatable uh, in your keynote, really reaching out to the community and talking about being on this mission together. I wonder if you can speak a little bit to how important community is to you, to the company, and what you guys are trying to accomplish. Well, the interesting thing about that, Jeff, is that that's really innate in our culture. And that's part of the, one of the reasons why I actually joined Sumo. Specifically, uh, one of our core values is we're in it with our customers. And that permeates all the way through to every action that every employee takes every single day. And ultimately, is seen and felt here at an event like Illuminate. So when we talked about community, is we're living and breathing the same thing that a lot of our customers are every single day all the challenges that they're dealing with, the cloud, the cost, the migrations, training. And so the more we get intelligent in terms of using our own service, the better it is for the rest of the users in our community. So that was a big theme for not just what we wanted people to take away, but also naturally as part of the announcements we made around some of the new intelligence, global right, intelligence. Right. I think it's I think it's an underreported kind of attribute of SaaS-based business models in that you are in bed with your customer because you're taking money from them every month or whatever the frequency is. So you've got to have this ongoing relationship and continue yep. to deliver value. And we've heard that time and time again. We heard it from the MLB uh, guy on stage. We had another partner on um, Samsung, the smart things. The yeah. Smartphone, but we had another one here. But just talking about working together with your teams collaboratively to execute on the objectives at hand, not just here, here's, some, here's some stuff, I'll take the money, good luck, we'll see you, uh, we'll see you next year. <laughs> yeah, I, interesting enough, you point out something that's uh, a precursor to being successful in the SaaS business, and that is you're having to get reelected every single year. But we don't wait till every single year. We try to make sure from the moment we land a new customer, that we help them understand what it's going to take for them to get not just instant value, but ongoing value out of our service. And we also often, oftentimes make sure they also understand that we're actually living and breathing the same experience they are, so right. there's that trusted advisor relationship, not just a vendor relationship. Right. The other great thing I love to see, and I think we first interviewed Sumo at our first AWS uh, San Francisco 2013. Um, you guys definitely picked the right, the rocket ship to, uh, to strap onto. But one of the things is, is that we love to watch is kind of the, the change of a company from an application space to a platform space. Because yeah. nobody has a line item for a new platform. Nobody wants to buy a new platform. I tried to launch a platform company as a platform, it doesn't work. You got to have an app. So that's what you guys did. But you've got, you've got the infrastructure and the architecture in place that's now allowing you to get into the platform play. And the slide that really jumped out to me, I took a picture with my camera, was the diversity of roles in organizations that have Sumo Logic after I think they've had 60 months, you start seeing customer success people, design people, quality assurance people. These are not engineers, this is not reliability, and this is a whole separate set of people that are using this great tool that you guys have built to solve some different business objectives yeah. than maybe the ones when they started the company. Well, that's predicated on how we started the company. We never started the company to be a siloed tool used for one part of the organization. It was always meant for how do we take what was typically in the back room only to a select few of folks in security or operations to other parts of the organizations, thereby democratizing like we've been talking about. Right. And so, over the last few years, since you mentioned AWS and the reInvent show, we spent an enormous amount of energy and investment in terms of making sure that we're constantly listening to our users, we're constantly redesigning and iterating on our user experience so that we can actually extend from the power users that might be in development or operations or security into these other teams that you've been mentioning. Right. And now we're seeing evidence of that, which is phenomenal. 
So it's, you know, we, we go to so many shows. We talk to a lot of smart people. It's, it's really fun. And, and one of the things that I've come to believe in terms of how do you drive innovation, some really simple things. You give more people access to more data with the tools to manipulate it, and then the ability to make decisions based on that data. And that was really a big part of your theme in terms of you know, some of the new product releases that, that you announced, and also, again, what we just talked about in terms of the use cases, it's giving more people the tools and the data so they can actually make innovative steps instead of just funneling it through, you know, I got asking somebody to run a BI report for me or this or that, that's not the way anymore. You're spot on and I think um, we're still earning that right to be honest with you and while we've seen massive adoption in terms of various profiles of users and the types of data, I think we're honestly just scratching the surface here and specifically what I mean by that is, um, We've announced some interesting things around industry benchmarks and community insights and the, obviously the modern app report that you talked about and covered before, but there's also a different subset of users that are now embarking on and leveraging a platform like this, and those are the data engineers, and those are the data scientists, because they don't want to be left in the back room. They also want, just like security operations or analysts or development teams, to be able to collaborate, be able to iterate, be able to share their own experience with not just the service, but how they're getting value out of the service. Right. And so, what's most refreshing and, and honestly, something that we pay very close attention to is the types of roles and users that are here. And you see people from interesting enough product or finance or success support to your comment, but that's innate in, in the value of something like this that we're referring to in terms of machine data analytics platform. Right. So it's so, you know, you guys are in such a good spot with the, with the machine data. The, the MLB guy was interesting. He sh just threw up a slide with a whole bunch of really big numbers. Um, but even more than that, we were at an AT&T show on Monday and the, the conversation's all about 5G, right? And the big thing about 5G, 100X, 100X more throughput than 4G, designed for machine to machine interaction. I mean, the, the tsunami of data that we've been living through up till now is going to be dwarfed by this yes. continuing tsunami when we get 5G, Internet of Things, Industrial Internet of Things. You guys are pretty well positioned to take advantage of this big giant trend. We are, but we're also being very conscious and prescriptive of how we approach it. So we've been maniacally focused first on the new applications and therefore the new architectures associated with these applications that are being built and born and bred in the cloud. Then we extend it into those that are being lifted and shifted, right? Because we had to earn the trust on the right there, particularly those that were running traditionally on-prem, you want to rewrite the front end. And in doing so, we had to oftentimes interface and interact and get sign off by security. And so that naturally led us into the CISO and the security operations analyst team starting to understand well, what's going on over there? Why are those guys using this service and why aren't we? So then we extended our opportunity to the security analytics play. Right. And you naturally point out there's other opportunities into connected devices, industrial IoT, IoT, and what we heard from some of our customers today in consumer IoT. Right. But we're going to go to it gradually, we're also going to go to it through partners and really extend the platform as customers use it for those use cases, not necessarily how we see fit always. Right, right. I wonder if you could dig a little deeper into how security has changed. You've been in the industry uh, for a long time. Go Gauchos, I saw you went to Santa Barbara. My daughter's at Santa Barbara now, so we're all about the Gauchos. <laughs> But you've seen you know, how security has changed from this you know, walled garden or you know, mowed around the castle, however you want to, to, to describe it, into being baked everywhere, up and down the stack, throughout the applications, throughout the infrastructure, and how that's really changed you know, everyone being involved in security, regardless of kind of what your day job is or what your, uh, what your yeah. title is. See, that's what's the, the interesting thing. You heard it from MLB and Neil there's a shortage of security professionals that are out there. So it's no longer just the duty and responsibility of security operations or analysts, it's everyone upstream. And that's the power of what Sumo provides. It can't be an afterthought. And so what we're helping understand, for our customers to understand is, as you architect these new arch uh, workloads, specifically looking at microservices or containers or cloud, put some forethought and insight into what does that mean from not just an operational perspective, how do you instrument and collect and log and events and metrics, but also from a security perspective. And so when you are able to leverage one platform to do so, it actually is a connecting 
mechanism, meaning that it's bringing these teams together versus isolating, siloing them like in the past. Right, right. And I'd love to jump in. You did a little bit in your report, and now you've you now some of the benchmarks and stuff about how you're able to aggregate, anonymize, and aggregate backend data from a lot of different customers to start to share that share that information, to use BI and, and machine intelligence to optimize, to use benchmarks and to help your customers do a better job. I mean, you're sitting on a boatload of data and it's we really are. a great way to provide another layer of value beyond just kind of the core yes. functions of the, of the products. I totally agree. Um, and we are still early in that journey though. And as I mentioned earlier in the announcements today, one of the ways that we're fixated on making sure we continue to get more data is constantly look for ways that we can bend that cost curve down for our customers so that they can start to ingest more of their tier two, tier three data or their lower performant data so we can get more intelligent, more smart, and also provide that value add back into the community right. and the service. So we felt that we weren't ready before because we needed to see multiple sets of years across multiple different types of data sets to be able to launch and release something like Global Insights. We started actually three years ago with a modern app report because that was usage based, not survey based. Right. And it's, and it's really interesting real because data. <laughs> it's real data, right? Um, but we were contemplating even three years ago when we did the report, do we start to put out some of these benchmarks? And we felt that we were too early because we needed more data, we needed different types of data from across different geographies, different types of usage, different technologies, and so we held off. And so that was one of the things that we've been paying very close attention to, and what the announcement today was all centered on is, yes, we've been talking about some insights around the industry, but you as the community of users here right. are helping us get smarter, help each other get smarter, and we're going to start to allow you guys to compare yourselves, back to your question, around Am I best in class from an operational KPI perspective? And what does that mean from utilization versus cost? And am I best in class from a key risk perspective, from a security perspective, for example? Right. And how does that compare to others? And when you're sharing the reality of that type of data in your face, it forces you to do something, take action. Right. And the whole premise here is insights and intelligence. Yeah. And so the more forthcoming and transparent we are with our customers in terms of these types of insights and intelligence, the more they're going to be using and adopting the platform, and hopefully, together as right. a community, getting smarter and, and yeah, more that, efficient. The, the graphic you showed, I think a whole bunch of green lights and one yellow light, all the eyes go right to the, yeah, what right. the heck, what's my yellow light? All right, you know, I'll give you the last word on, on a word that, that you used again a number of times in, in your keynote, and that's trust. Yes. Um, at the end of the day, th that is such an important word in, in, in all types of relationships, but certainly in business relationships. You know, why are you putting the focus on that? I mean, clearly it's important, you're highlighting trust. In fact, I think you said, we are your trusted steward uh, for your data. Really important attribute for this company. Well, that's been something early on, Jeff, in our, in our architecture and things we did in terms of guaranteeing data sovereignty, privacy, encryption. We took no short change or short shortcuts in terms of how we architected the service eight plus years ago. And we don't take any of those now. Um, and the trust comment is because we have to trust, we have to build the trust and relationship, not just in terms of the value they're getting out of using the service, but that we're going to make sure that we keep their data safe and secure. Because we are PCI certified, we also are HIPAA certified, SOC type one, type two, we're doing GDPR, all these other attestations and stuff that our customers have to face, we're also facing. Right. So together we're actually creating a trusted network. And that's the strategy here, is to create that trust and network, and to share the insights. Right. Well, the passion comes through, and again, uh, congratulations on the show and the success, and, and we continue to enjoy watching the ride. Thank you very much for being part of it. It's All great right. to be here with you today. All right, user mean, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at Sumologic Illuminate 2018. Thanks for watching.